If you have acted all over the world and in hundreds of productions, there must be some crazy, hilarious mishaps on stage, right? Here, Manu recounts many funny scenes that caught him off guard. Manu, you've acted all over the world. So for all these years, you've gone to England, you've gone to Africa, you've gone to America, Europe, India, all over. And yes, I, I mean, everybody knows how good an actor you are. And I personally admire your works. But, you know, it's, we know it's a lot of hard work. We both know how hard it is that we have to work to get on stage. But surely there are some really fun times too, some funny moments that you had. I can bet I had some funny <laughs> moments. So, let us hear it. <laughs> Actually, I just had occasion to talk about this a short while ago. Um, I was playing Othello. Mm -hmm. First line of audience is, um, is something like about maybe 12 feet away from the stage end. Mm -hmm. And because in the final scene, Othello is killing his, the wife whom he loves very much, mm. Desdemona. Mm. If you know the story, I'm sure you know the story that he thinks that she has betrayed him. Yeah. And she's innocent of that. And that's the tragedy of Othello. Othello. So I have to like put one knee on the bed and then hold her and yet let the audience see from far away what I'm doing. So I've got to be a bit upright, say my lines and, you know, emote and all that, and then put my hands over her throat. And there I am strangling her. But my elbows had to be like, you know, to get the leverage, you know, yes. because I'm only using one leg. And my lower arm was on her breast, and it, up. I didn't realize that, of course, and <laughs> don't ask me if I enjoyed it or not, because I didn't realize it at all. No, I wasn't going ask you. She, she was struggling with that, and she turned her head, she was good enough to know, she turned her head away from the audience, and then she looked up and said, that, you know, your, your hand is on my breast, your hand is on my breast. <laughs> uh, at one point, I even looked at her and said, like, as if she's still alive and I haven't finished killing her. Die! That's what I was telling myself, my motivation. You're still alive, die! And then, she's dead. And then, she turned her head and I said, you idiot, you wait until afterwards. Or something to that effect. She's still speaking. No, okay. She's speaking to me as, as Manu, but she's not speaking to me as Othello, who has just killed his wife. It had all the emotions and the pathos. I don't know if the audience, anyone in the audience, heard that this conversation. conversation which was going on on top of Shakespeare's final words of husband killing his wife because he loves her. I mean, can you get more tragic than that? <laughs> it's a good thing that we were friends, you know. <laughs> and uh, we have known each other over the years. And so, I mean, there was, of course, no, no recrimination. But I said, you mean you didn't feel anything? I wanted to tell her, if you had bigger breasts, I would have probably oh, felt I it. Love. Like, you know, <laughs> I But uh, we are friends enough to talk, talk like that and say yeah. that. <laughs> I couldn't suggest anything else, but you know, how can a man killing his wife be told, your hand is on my, my ribcage or, you know, or my hair is caught in your cufflinks or whatever. Oh, That's dear. one of my funny moments oh, as Othello. At least once I've come on a wrong entrance and it was not the line that I should have come on in. And um, it's almost like, you know, Potong Jalan. <laughs> yes. It was Macbeth, I think. And Lady Macbeth had not finished it. It's almost like 
I don't want her to finish it. Remember that line? My dearest one, Duncan comes here tonight. Yes. And of course, you know who that, that person was, that uh, actress who was acting it. And I have to go over and my dearest one and hug her and my arms cannot meet. <laughs> because she was that big sized. <laughs> you have to live with that. How do, do you get through this? We started off with the word imagine. Imagine la, that, you know, she's swelled and no. And so when you see her, only you say, my dearest one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, la, acting. La. Yeah, it's too la, acting. But you, you, you know, make it like real that the audience will understand and accept it. <laughs> yes, of course. I said, well, you should have, gone, should have gone slimming for three months before you took this role away. <laughs> <laughs> Those were some of the funny moments. But there are other, you know, every production has its funny moments, you know, when <laughs> you, you're having a sword or something like that, but the sword is not in the scabbard, you know. The scabbard is that you thought that there was a sword, so you go and <laughs> Those type of things happen. You know, I've you seen imagine. others go through some real misfits like um, they did not zip up the, oh, the no. back, you know, yeah. ladies. And at some point, the hook, the top there, put those. So the whole thing comes out. And all the while you're holding on like that and talking and carrying on in your character. <laughs> while the people on the, on the wings there are saying, come quick, come quick, come quick, click, 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 click. So at some stage, you go back, and then someone puts two <laughs> or three you know, clips, and then you go back, and then you can't remember your line. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I love acting because there is no second chance, there is no take two, no take three. You, you have to like remember what the next one is, and then get on with it, and then Kanamara afterwards, love from everybody else. But at least that's part of it. That's part of the That's action. part of the beauty of stage <laughs> acting. <laughs> I've also had one, one occasion where I needed to go to the toilet, so I went to the toilet, but I didn't realize my scene was already on, and so someone came looking, but where's Mano, where's Mano? And then, here yeah, I'm coming up now. Hey, you're supposed to be on stage already, you know? <laughs> really? Oh, we, 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 oh, we. And then you just come in and Say the line which is on your mind. You know, go and say, what did you say? Where's, where's my line? Where's my entry point? You just pick it up. The audience will forgive you. Yeah. If you're in earnest and you're not like, you know, like tipu lah. Yeah. yeah. Those were some of the things. I can't remember anyone, anything near what this poor actor who had a live bullet and shot oh. that woman, that kind of... Yeah, uh, not at that stage at all. How did you manage if you had lost some lines or you forgot your lines? I think I had some very good directors um, who, who knew right at the rehearsal stage that especially when we came to the end where we have got all our lines but don't take that for granted because there mm. will come a moment at yes. the worst time the last thing you expect, least expected, and the line will just disappear from your head. Don't worry about it. Don't even show people that you've forgotten your line by, oh my God, or changing your expression, or you know, like, like, if you're near a prompter, they don't exist these days, right? No prompters. <laughs> no prompters. Those days, on a typical stage, um, you have prompters on, in front, just at one corner behind the curtain, another one on that side behind the curtain, and the stage manager is knows there is a likelihood that you may forget it on this one because during the rehearsals there has, it has happened, and will follow you backstage. And these two prompters there, sometimes there are four prompters. I remember. Yeah. And you just work your way close to one of them, and. Um, they already know you're in trouble and you just stretch your line which you know and you can't remember the next line and then you make a move until you reach to the prompter, you make a move by 
like as if there's a mosquito or something which hit you and then distract <laughs> the audience with that and they go and say a line and they will give it a line, give it a line. That don't cry out. <gasps> and then from where you are and you say, my dearest one. <laughs> You know, I've actually forgotten my line, but you know, now I can remember. And there you are, in all your resplendent beauty. What sayest thou, if we shall have dinner tonight? Or something to that effect. Lah. And then you can hear silent whispers of, oh, finally, oh, thank God, thank God. You know, you hear all these amplified sounds from the stage crew and the stage manager and everyone. And then the audience, even those who know that you were in trouble, say, clap be because you've solved the problem. And that's being natural. And, it, and that's when you connect with the audience. But if you have not connected and you're just another actor trying to do your thing and trying to actually act, act you know, very act short like that. And then you've, you have that type of uh, moments, you know what they will say? Die, you! <laughs> I'm forgiving I, I come audience, from Ipoh, so you know, they all speak Cantonese, they'll say like that, say I'm tall lay. <laughs> Dead man's head, am I? <laughs> yeah. But audiences are actually, at least Malaysian audiences are very, very... Forgiving. Forgiving. And they love, like that, you know, it's like added spice, like, you know. Oh, wow, this curry got that little bit of nutmeg put into it. <laughs> Yeah, true. Um, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 you did. It was lovely. There have also been yeah. moments where, dangerous moments where um, sword fighting, for example. I've used foils, and you've got to know how to use the foil. Foil is just a very thin, long one, and the blades can move, you know? Yeah. Then I've used sabers. Mm. Um, and um, for King Arthur, Excalibur. In fact, I wanted to bring it to show, bring it today to show you. you know. I still got that, and it's real steel, real sword. You can't fake it. You can't make a wood and paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you need to have two hands. They, they use two hands to use that. It can be dangerous. Can kill, of course. So you got to be responsible enough and use that. And there was once when during the practice, thank God, at the time during practice, we were using wooden swords. And my sword cracked. So I bring it up like this to block the fuller coming like that, Macduff, and Macbeth. So Macduff comes in and <laughs> broke through it, cut through my face like that and had to have stitches here, stitches here. The mark is still there. Mm. And for next night's performance, plaster, plaster, padded, all stitched up. Hadn't bathed, haven't washed. Yesterday's makeup, still some of that there. You put fresh makeup on top. Carry on acting. Wow. Um, so there are dangerous moments and, and you don't have the kind of experience or, or directors who know this stuff. You know, everybody is in an ex excitement mode. So sometimes there are slips up when it comes to safety. Yeah. And like steps, yeah. for example, yeah. you know, you have the three steps oh, and then yeah. you go and put it there. So you climb up the steps. Once you move a little bit, huh, you can fall, you know, especially if you're moving up fast or moving down. Yeah. And the biggest failure, embarrassment, and shame I had was when I was directing... No way. Yes, yes, yes. When um, the microphones were held just above the Palmet front station, mm. above that, like that. One, two, three. So, when you're singing in the rain, it goes and catches up the microphones. Suddenly, the microphones were not working. Oof. And the actors did not know that it is not working. 
and connecting the whole wiring and all that was a steel hollow pipe, you know. Mm. The wires were inside then, mm. like, like, like. So how do you do that without closing the screen, telling the audience, uh, take recess time for a while while we fix this? The whole mood is gone. So the stage manager, without consulting me, thought that he, he knew what to do. So he started to knock on that hollow piping huh, where the wires are. He says where the problem is, the wiring is there. So, you know, no, no, no. And the microphones were working. And it was going, gong, gong, gong. <laughs> the audience started to just keep on laughing. And they knew there was a problem and they were trying to do something about it. But that became the act. And we actors here like helpless. When do we come into the picture? When do you go to the next scene? We're looking around to see if somebody giving us some kind of a direction. And um, I was tearing my hair. Mm -hmm. I had hair at that time. <laughs> now you know why it's not there. Um, I swore at that day I'll never direct again in my life. <laughs> but you did. But if, there's, if I was, if that was a professional production, nobody will hire me anymore. <laughs> Can't even solve a simple lighting issue. That was so good. those kind of things yeah. happened. Yes, 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 absolutely. But right, yeah. to the credit of all the cast and crew I've worked with, especially here in Malaysia, the experienced ones, the new ones, the wannabes, they're actually quite extraordinary in terms of cooperation. Oh, yes, yes. They're extraordinary in terms of willing to help somebody else who is less yeah. fortunate or has forgotten a line yeah. or cannot lift that thing but the character they are playing has to lift it and try to help them out. That type of gotong royong, you know, mm. I help you, you help me, you know, <laughs> attitude, which is what Keluarga Malaysia is all about. I bet you didn't know this, but there's more to come in the next episodes.